I can honestly say I've never had a player or a striker in this case come into the team and make such an impact. And he just feels like the player that we needed all along. Welcome back to another episode of Outcast 2 Icons with me, a man on the hunt for a striker. Maybe another striker. Really not sure yet. As always, if you enjoy the series up to this point, drop a like. Helps out the algorithm, helps more people find the content and whatnot. So I really do appreciate it. So I thought we'd jump right in. This is Jovan Markovic. Uh, he is a striker that has joined us on loan from Vitoru Constanza. Uh, now, I actually signed him up um, previously, but we just didn't have time in an episode to actually show that I'd already done it. Uh, he wasn't actually here at the time, so I figured it would make more sense to put him in here. So basically, the idea behind the signing of Markovic is just that... Greg Show, I like Greg Show a lot. Um, the issue I found with Greg Show is that he does seem to lack that little tiny bit of finishing compared to other people. Now, I feel like composure can be really outweighing that, but I feel like you do need it to be really good if that's going to matter. So with the opportunity came up to sign Markovic. Now, we do have an optional clause on the end to buy him permanently, which I don't think we'd extend. Uh, it's £100,000, which actually would still be quite a good deal for a player of his kind of quality, but still, uh, that would be the end of the season anyway. So he has now joined us. We're paying his full wages, which is quite a lot, and he does like a little bit of speed, but he at least has a sort of more of an aerial presence too, better finishing, some slight improvements over Greg Show that means he might well be able to do us a job for us. Uh, now, I have actually made a couple of signs for the end of the season for the club going forward, which we won't really benefit from, and I am still on the lookout for another striker potentially that could be the next level guy to really come in. But tell you what, strikers are hard at this level, particularly when you have slightly uh, more specialised roles like we do, uh, as you all already know. But just quickly, uh, Milos Kostic is joining at the end of the season on a free transfer, and honestly, like, he looks pretty good for a free transfer. He's barely on any money either. And in that exact same vein, there's Petter, uh, Petter Petaka or Petter Petaka, who's coming in Victoria Pills and again on a free transfer at the end of the season. I, I just thought that I would at least be able to leave the club with some quality. And again, he's not on big money. He's not even on the minimum. I think he's on 1300 a week when he joins at the end of the season. And he does have some really outstanding attributes in certain areas. So I figured, you know what? Leave the club with a few quality players as well. Um, would have been nice to use them, but you know how it goes. So we're back. It's been a long period off camera uh nearly a month in fact it might have been over a month in fact and you know how long those sort of things can take on this uh particular database but we just need to keep going like mtk away today is not going to be easy by any means and we're just going to go out there and do our best now match fitness is definitely okay but it really is just difficult. I've even been watching. So it just seems that they really do, because it's a friendly, don't seem to gain match fitness very well. And I've played this same team for basically every single friendly so far. And I've even watched a couple of them just to try to get the match fitness up. But hey, I guess it could be worse. And hopefully other teams will have similar problems to us. Right. So obviously the bench will need to change massively. And we're going to just, uh, I'll do a selection device. We'll see where we want to go from there. And uh, interestingly, they want to bring back in Greg Show. And they want to bring in... Mm. The only change of those I actually want to make, I, I still wish this menu would just allow you to untick these changes and it would just do the one that you want. But when you untick them, it removes the player that's already in the position because of course it does. So with that in mind, the only change I actually want to make is Kovacevic to drop out and to bring back Samir Ben Salem, um, who is finally back fit from his broken ribs again. So he's back re-registered in the squad. All is good. I feel sorry for Ferenc, but honestly, Edvin Eleven has done a really good job and I can't really stop that and i think one of the other slight issues we have with strikers in this system is that as much as we do play a pressing forward on support pressing forwards on support tend to be lacking in other areas in general and i'd quite like to find a player at some point later down the line that has a few extra attributes on top of that like technically finishing doesn't even matter for a pressing forward on support but to me it does because our pressing forward does still get into good finishing positions and actually has the highest xg on the entire team which shows that we still need someone that can put the ball in the net wow it's weird seeing some of these guys not on the bench although i do think some of them are going to have to be uh yeah booty will come onto the bench there style as well um Style is another player that's very unfortunate due to the emergence of Arteaga, honestly. Five substitutes outside the match squad. Oh, of course, yes. I'm an idiot. I have to clear the bench and redo it anyway, don't I? Also, I'm not even sure who I'd put Regan Booty on the bench for at this point. To be honest, maybe Mikhailov just for this one game. Now, there was some talk in the comments uh, in yesterday's video about why I didn't take the Royal Antwerp job. And the simple answer is that literally not allowed to. Uh, I didn't realize this at the time either, so I'm kind of glad I didn't. Basically, Royal Antwerp have been to a European final. So we are they are off the list as far as teams we can manage. Uh, but also, I promised that we would do the full season here at Seged as our final one and then leave in the summer. So yeah, it would have been a, it's been a best of both worlds. Very, very poor 37 minutes so far. Defensive display actually been okay from us, really. Uh, but 
I don't know. We've offered nothing going forward, and that can be an issue. Lack of possessions really cost us uh, in today's match so far. But when we did lose narrowly at home to these guys and played okay, oh, dearie me. Zoltan to Cats, 1-0 MTK. I mean, these are tough games. Thankfully, we've given ourselves a bit of a points cushion to work our way into the second half of the season because we really are only in the first half of the year. I'm not even sure what happens there. It looks to me as though the defender thinks that he's going to get it with the... It looks like the defender's going to get it here. And then they just... Yeah, I think they all assume he's going to win that header. Uh, still, probably shouldn't have been in a position to win it anyway. Okay, dreadful first half from us, really. Uh, no possessions. Come back a bit. Not offering anything. Really struggling here. Going to go a bit more uh, pass into space. We're also moving uh, Markovic over to be in a pressing forward on attack. See if he can make some runs in behind for us. Try and get, like, exactly that. <laughs> if he can just make those types of runs, I'd be happy. Oh, God. Now Bossic just hurt himself. Going to try to get more aggressive for this final 10 minutes, but it's been a really low quality game. Basically, no highlights uh, at all, really. Um, the goal. And that might actually be the only highlight of this game. And we are on extended. It's um very strange. Although we might have a chance here, potentially. Stavitsky. Durisic. He's got a bit of space in the midfield. If he can find Ben Salam, this is better. Opens it up for him. Artiaga. Grek show. Round the side for Kovacevic. Ferenc Kovacevic. Oh, no. Terrible first touch. Stavitsky! And his header is saved by the goalkeeper. But that was at least something. But if he brings that into his path and gets something away there, Van Dijk at the back post. And Pap gets in the way. Ben Salam to put one in. Can Van Dijk get his enormous neck on it? Perhaps he does get his head on it, but it's over the bar. It does look as though it is going to be another defeat. Uh, a second one in a row against two very good sides, but I don't think we can really complain too much. Offered something towards the end of that. We need to slowly work our way in. Now, we do have a cup game against a lower tier side next up, which will hopefully... Get us a chance to grab a victory. Get some confidence back going into the rest of the season. Although straight off of that is Pushkas at home. So who knows? Back in a sec. Right, guys, we're back. I've just recorded this bit once already and realized I wasn't recording the game footage. So uh, yeah, five minutes of me telling you about highlights that you didn't see. Back in Second time try now. I can honestly say I've never had a player or a striker in this case come into the team and make such an impact. And he just feels like the player that we needed all along. But it was the cup first, as Kurditz gave them the lead. Silly penalty given away by Mikhailov, uh, unfortunately. He took out our centre-back and the uh, on-running striker to give away a foul. But then he did at least pull himself back out of the mud a little bit with a nice ball through as Kovacevic finds an equaliser. Nice to see him back in goal-scoring form. Uh, and then, in the 66th minute, Grekshaw knocks it down nicely here. Kovacevic linking up with him brilliantly. Lovely ball from Artiaga to the back post. And there was 11 to make it 2-1 and put us through in the cup. But then, at home to Pushkash, Ben Salam's ball in Van Dijk goal. They played the three up top system again, and we knew how to. You saw what we were like against them late on in the last game. Markovic picking it up again, spacing behind for Kovacevic, in for his second goal in as many matches, and a lovely assist from Markovic. As half time, we found ourselves two goals to the good against top of the league Pushkas, and we were playing well. It wasn't like we were lucky to be involved in this one, and then it just got even better. Markovic here comes back to Artiaga, and it's 3 0 on 55 minutes. Absolute scenes. And this is the one time in the game that they actually managed to isolate our defenders against their three strikers. It's the only time it worked for them. Perga gets through. They do get a goal back, but it's not enough. 3-1. And as you can see, really deserve that victory. Massive performance against an incredible side, but we took what we learned in the last game against them and turned it against them. Brilliant performance, including from Markovic. But it was the next game where we truly saw what Markovic could do. Artiaga getting the ball, makes a lovely run into the channel, sets himself, finish. That's the exact type of thing that Gretschko has just been unable to do for us this season, and it's really cost us at times. And another example moments later, Kovacevic getting the ball this time. Lovely little running between the centre-backs. Markovic this time on his left foot, in off the post, 2-0. Just bang, bang, the guy can score goals. It is beautiful to see. Um... We managed to grab ourselves a third one then in the 80th minute. Lovely stuff here. Eventually, uh, whipped across by Cissé. There was George Nunn going to the back post. 3-0 against second from bottom. And a really strong performance to boot as well. It's just nice to see a striker leading the line. He's winning headers. He's playing people in. He got on the end of two goals with some lovely runs. He is the striker that we've been missing, it just feels like. Next up, it was away to Kishvada. Now, the fixtures have been somewhat kind to us, uh, both with who we've been playing and where we've been playing them. But nevertheless, you've still got to score goals. Stavitsky gave us the lead after just uh, 19 minutes. They missed a penalty in this game. And when I say missed, I mean literally missed. Cissé made a stupid foul, gave away a penalty, but they missed the target entirely with the penalty. Cissé then puts a the ball in. There was Ringo Meerveld, more on him in a minute, to make it 2-0 to us. But sadly, Cissé created another silly, gave away a second penalty. This time they dispatched it 2-1. Next up, though, was one of the most batshit games I've seen in a very, very long time quite simply ball comes to Kovacevic here slots us 1-0 up in the cup against Uspest away from home in the first leg after just eight minutes and the, the form was superb at this point we were just creating so many opportunities uh, and just being able to take them which is key and look at this for a finish from Markovic full volley over the top for 2-0 on the stroke of half time what a finish we just Grexia would not be able to make those kind of finishes sadly uh, but then unfortunately a dreadful pass here 
allows them to come in. Diabate gets a goal back for them on the stroke of halftime for 2-1. But this game, the second half, just completely went off the rails at this point. Bad defending from us here. Ball was allowed to be played in behind for Diabate. And with a matter of seconds, we'd gone from 2-0 to 2-2. And it didn't really get a lot better from there for us. Uh, well, I say that. It did immediately, actually, as it goes. Artiago getting the ball here out on the right-hand side. Brings it out to Cissé, whips it in. There was George now with a beautiful finish for 3-2 in the cup. Come on, lads. It was really nice to see. But this, this is just... We just sort of fell apart at this point. They managed to get in behind us a few times. The lack of pace in the defenders. Diabate threw again. Hat-trick for him. 3-3 three, three on the hour mark. And it kind of just sort of spurred them on at that point, sadly. And it, yeah, <laughs> once again, some of our passing was really lax at this point. And we just couldn't quite handle that quality that the top side, or one of the top sides in the league had, as Nemet made them 4-3 winners. Uh, sorry, 4-3 up after 63 minutes. There was more to come. This game is not even close to done yet. Uh, Diabate getting through again here, but we managed to defend it this time. Sort of. As it's put through for Ben Scheib to make it 5-3 on 69 minutes and I could start to feel the game fading away from us a little bit at this point another terrible pass this time from Juricic allowed Nemet through we pushed right up to try and get back in as Nemet then made it 6-3 to Oispest in this game and yeah it got away from us a little bit in the second half you could say but we still had more <laughs> Bradish with the ball through Crespin at the back post for 6-4 I don't know how either team... 10 goals in this game is mental. Uh, they scored eight of... Sorry, they scored six of their uh, eight shots on target and we scored four of our five. Mad match, honestly. Um, but could have been better. But then, at home, Ergos Medicos Vezdi, look at this for a finish. This is incredible. 69 minutes. The ball comes back in. What about that for a volley from Markovic for 1-0? Once again, his goals have single-handedly won us a match. And when you've got a striker that can pull off that kind of finish with a defense behind him that is willing to step up and make those challenges, just what a finish. Sadly, the second leg of the cup was a much more subdued affair as it was a 1-0 victory for Oispest as Paolo de Silva with the goal. I think the biggest example of that was against uh, Dios Jury, uh, sitting 11th in the league at the time, in the relegation zone, 58th minute, Nemeth is through, easily our worst performance of the season for a while, 1-0. And that was all we could really offer in this game. We just couldn't keep the momentum going. Crespin was still good, but you can see we deserve nothing from this match at all. But amazingly, we are third in the league still. That little spell of wins where we were playing... This is the thing. We played against Kishvazda, we won. We played against Fehavar, we won. We played against Mes Medikas Vezdi, and we won. Uh, the biggest result in there was the Pushkas one, uh, which admittedly isn't as surprising when you saw how well we played against them last time. But those wins were super duper important, and they came at a very important time. And the thing is, our next two games are away at Budapest Honved, who we've beaten quite comfortably uh, once this season and lost somewhat unfortunately to, and then Debrecen at home. There's more winnable matches coming up in the next few matches and if we can put ourselves back onto a good run i genuinely wonder if this team could actually be in the european conversation because we're just we're scoring goals in games where perhaps we shouldn't be and we're not conceding as much as perhaps we should be as well mainly due to people like joe walsh and of course crespin and we also made a signing this is ringo mirvel he's coming from go ahead eagles he came through a scout report and i saw him and i was like oh wow it's a natural met salah on attack or he can play up here or as an advanced midfielder on attack i just I think he's great. And we had the opportunity to sign him. First paid signing I think I've actually made. £50,000 for Ringo Mierveld. But I think he's a really astute piece of business for us. Today, we have finally had a little bit of a rest. The first one for a while. So we will be able to go about as full strength as physically possible here now. Uh, so Ben Salem, no. I want Jurisic instead of you. Mierveld, I'm going to give him one more chance. But I do like Ben Salem. We've had a few injuries to Eleven and Bosic, which haven't exactly helped us at all. Kovacevic has come back into form, which is nice. Artiaga's done well. Uh, everybody's just clicking right now. It took us a little while to get going, but my goodness, Markovic as well. His, I mean, he may have only scored four goals, but m two of them were game-winning goals. And that is massive when you're a team struggling, or not even struggling, when you're a team that's fighting for every point, that's what you need. So I think that's what we're going to go with on the bench. I'm happy to make that happen. I just want us to keep playing. Now, we have actually lost two in a row, in fairness, both 1-0. So I'd like to think that hopefully we can just get ourselves up for this again here and see the best out of some of our players, because it is at least, they're, they're more rested now than they were before. Although they are actually top of the form standings themselves, so not an easy game by any stretch. In addition to that, we got offered the Panathinaikos job, or rather an interview at Panathinaikos. Uh, fourth currently in the Greek Superliga, big side, like massive side, easily the biggest job we've had offered to us so far. And uh, as much as I would have loved to, they're the only Greek team that are on the list of teams we can't manage due to them being in a European final. God damn it, man. I'm also curious as to what you guys think about Villarreal, given that they're not technically on the list because they didn't win a trophy or have been in a European final yet, but they obviously were in and against Manchester United uh, a couple of days ago. So my question to you lot, and I really do need an answer to this, is what do you think we should do about that? Are Villarreal still manageable in this save because it didn't happen 
technically, or are they off the list as well? Do let me know. Like, Markovic is scoring the goals he should be scoring, but he's also taking opportunities that you think would be very, very difficult for any player to take, and he's putting them in the back of the net, and that is the kind of impact that I could only dream of. I honestly want to know, have you guys ever had a striker come in in, like, January and do a job for you in quite the way that he has for us? They've got a lot of possession so far, actually. Now, in two games against uh, Honved so far this season, we looked very good in the opening day game against them, despite losing. Oh, no, Deutsch! Poor touch! And it's a great save from Walsh. Just a brilliant save from the Eagle himself. Very, very strong start, though, for Honved. And it's these sort of moments that you have to try and work through. Deutsch has got it, though. We've got, well, we've got players forward. Stavitsky is there. Where's Markovic with the run? Stavitsky's going to go straight through. Stavitsky can't get through. He's on his right foot. No! Really struggling for possession again. I'm actually tempted to do our thing once more where we try that. And it just seems to have a, a nice balancing effect in these types of games. Really, that only we've had the best chance of the game, or certainly one of them, which for some reason was only a 0.1. I don't know how, but there you go. Maybe the angle on his wrong foot. And it's going to come back again, this time to Juricic out wide. Stavitsky... Uh-oh, don't lose the ball here. Dangerous. They're pushing out quite a lot here. But if we can find a ball through for Markovic, great first touch! This man is my absolute hero. What a finish from Jovan Markovic. And it's Budapest Honved nil, Seged 1. And this is exactly the same thing I've been saying this entire time. Markovic has just got... His movement is superb. What a, what a ball that is from Deutsch, though. Into the channel, but he's still got so much more to do. Just rolls that along the ground. The exact type of finish that Gretschko probably still would have missed. And we have the lead against the odds. It is exactly those types of moments that he has revolutionized us. In games like this, where we're just not really on it, he has the comp the ability to... Oh, no, that's poor. He has the ability to step up and do things like that that just completely win you points at times. Into the box. So many blocks. Oh, it's so easy for Jakob Novak. And, well, within seconds, they've managed to find an equalizer. And that was just a really bad pass from Ringo Mierveld. Uh, he struggled a little bit on that one. And it's cost us dearly in the end. That was such a... Oh, such a big moment for us taking the league there against the run of the play and then immediately throwing it, throwing it up. Uh, it's a brilliant finish from Novak. Keeper's wrong-footed. Nothing Walsh could do there. Ah, God damn it. It's quite difficult to find a pass, but Mierveld's dropped short. Nice. Nice work again. Markovic, here it comes. Here it comes. Bosic around the side. I, I have no words for Jovan Markovic. It's 2-1 to Seged. Brilliant work from the lads again. And we now lead in this match once again against the run of play. We have got so good at these types of performances now. Uh, really nice football from us in the midfield here. Just really sped the play up a lot. Lots of one-touch stuff. Lovely ball around the side for Bosic. And Markovic again. So clinical in, in those situations. Six goals. He's the top scorer now. Out of nowhere. Ball through the channel. And due. Ball across again. And Novak. What a save from Joe Walsh. That might be the save of the season. It might have hit him a little bit right at him, but he closed down the gap and made an enormous save there. Uh, Jeladaris does brilliantly initially. It's around the side for Gorella. This is a tight angle. What a tackle! What a tackle from Jeladaris! We just need one clearance and we get the victory. Ball in, caught by Joe Walsh, and surely now we're going to get the victory in this game. Uh, against all the odds, we've definitely not deserved it. Walsh has been spectacular. Markovic has been even better. Another brace for him, and it's Budapest Honved 1, Seged 2. Markovic is the is an absolute demon at taking low quality chances and turning them into goals. He is the, he's a god. What a man. Make no mistake, we were not good overall in this match by any means. And Markovic's goals have basically saved us there as we now go third still. 38 points on the board. To give you an idea, usually a good run is like two points a game if you really want to. Even the title leading team are only just above that right now. There's a really low points threshold from second downwards to the point where a good run could actually see you snatch ridiculous results at the moment. At 16 points above the drop zone, we're not going down by any means. And honestly, I would be pretty disappointed if we finished outside of the top six, given our form right now. And particularly as our next game is against Debrecen. Having a lethal striker like that sure does help. So next episode, of course, is going to be Debrecen at home, starting off, coming back for MTK as well in there. We've done a massive chance, eight games off camera in today's video. <laughs> so I do apologize, but I wanted to make sure that we got bang for our buck. And hell, there was a lot of goals in there. So if you've enjoyed it and you're looking forward to the rest of the season, because I bloody am, now that this team is starting to click, I'm excited about what we can achieve over the final few matches of this season. So yeah, drop a like, that'd be awesome. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, that'd be sick too. Stream on Twitch, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, go for there as well. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, we'll have a youth and take as well. Well, the madness is only going to continue. If we can just keep on going, I'll be amazed. There's a lot of away games in there, though, so I do feel we may start to slide a little bit, but that's fine. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.